Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah on a break. More than 147,000 students attended 210 government schools following a hiatus of in-person attendance for about three years due to the exceptional circumstances of the coronavirus pandemic. The Minister of Education, Dr. Majid Naimi, praised the strong interest accorded for the educational sector by His Majesty the King and the support of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister that enabled the ministry to provide its best services for all academic levels. The minister visited several schools to follow up on the procedures of returning to school, during which he participated in welcoming new students, toured classrooms, and facilities and followed up on the implementation of education and sports activities. And Naomi said that the ministry prepared for the new academic year by providing a number of supportive services for students, including more than 700 buses transporting more than 41,000 students, as well as buses designa designated for students with special needs. With great joy and enthusiasm, students went back to in-person classes after a break of more than two years due to the circumstances of the coronavirus pandemic, ready to begin their school year and meet their teachers, who in turn prepared with a distinguished reception for the students. Students' return to schools was filled with excitement and focus in a day that was described by some as a happy day, where students can once again attend classes physically and meet their colleagues. On the first day of the students' return to schools, the educational authorities received them with gifts and presented them with a set of basics that they will work in the current stage to help them combine the information they received during the past two years from a distance and link it to the current study materials. The Minister of Education, Dr. Majid Naimi, patronized the inauguration ceremony of the Bahrain Innovation and Technology Transfer Center in the University of Bahrain in partnership with the Ministry of Industry and Commerce and the Commercial Law Development Program of the U.S. Departments of Commerce and George Mason University. Present were the Minister of Industry and Commerce, Zayda Zayani, the U.S. Ambassador to Bahrain, Stephen Bondi, UOB, President Jawahar al Mawahki and a number of officials. The Education Minister praised the inauguration of the center, which affirms the strong relations between Bahrain and the U.S., and praised the contributions of the Ministry of Commerce and Industry and the UOB in this regard. The minister indicated that this center is a promising step towards transforming into the new institutional model for prestigious universities by encouraging a culture of innovation and creativity among students, researchers, and academics. The Minister of Industry and Commerce praised the role of the center in enhancing innovation and and added that it is an important step towards making Bahrain a center of innovation by adopting the best international practices and transferring knowledge and experience to the center from its counterparts in the U.S. through specialized experts and consultants. The UOB president stressed the importance of the partnership established between the university, the Ministry of Industry and Commerce, and the relevant authorities in the United States, which resulted in the establishment of this center. She noted the role of the technology transfer centers and offices in the universities to support innovative research and technology transfer from the academic sector to the private sector. In partnership with the Ministry of Industry and Commerce, the Commercial Law Development Program of the U.S. Department of Commerce, and George Mason University, the Minister of Education patronized the inauguration ceremony of the Bahrain Innovation and Technology Transfer Center at the University of Bahrain. The Minister of Industry and Commerce pointed out that the center will have a key role in sponsoring innovation and supporting research and development in order to improve targeted indicators of innovation and intellectual property in the Kingdom of Bahrain. Uh, we're very glad to be here at the University of Bahrain today to inaugurate uh, the Bahrain uh, Innovation and Technology Transfer Center. This is one of the initiatives of the uh, SME Development Board. Uh, it is catering to create a full ecosystem to foster innovation and creativity in Bahrain. We're very grateful for the University of Bahrain to partner with us uh, to host it at the university uh, and we're looking forward to the outcomes of this center. The center is meant to take someone through the full journey of their innovation from protection legally to commercialization at the end of uh, the cycle. Uh, we hope that with such a center in Bahrain, this completes a missing link in, in our ecosystem and this will create more uh, incentive for people to uh, come up with more innovations, to, to uh, log them, register them and benefit from their commercial return. The center aims to protect the rights of innovators and transfer technology from the University of Bahrain to the private sector by developing and strengthening innovation and research and development systems at the University of Bahrain by adopting the best international practices.
The United States government and the United States Embassy is really honored to participate in today's event, event which launched the Bahrain Innovation and Technology Transfer Center here at the University of Bahrain. This center is bringing together disparate activities that will lead to new innovations, new products, new services uh, within Bahrain and allow inventors to protect their intellectual property. The center also aims to market innovative products and services, provide an attractive environment at the University of Bahrain to incubate and commercially promote these innovations, and provide a financial return for inventors and innovators and the university. We have uh, different methodologies which allows us to transfer technology from the university to the uh, industry, including the new IP policy that focuses on the commercialization of intellectual property rights and technology transfer agreements. We have two different agreements, a comprehensive licensing agreement and an agreement for spin-offs. And uh, we do have um, the invention disclosure forms that the inventor would fill out on the BITC website for us to assess and see if we can legally protect those rights and if there is commercial potential to the invention. The center will issue licensing agreements, patents and work to increase economic income by increasing the number of startups, creating job opportunities, developing productivity and increasing the effectiveness of budgets allocated for research and development. The inauguration of the Bahrain Innovation and Technology Transfer Center comes in line with the goals of the government and Bahrain Economic Vision 2030. Reporting for Bahrain International, I am Hamad Youssef. In line with the new academic year and in order to enhance the community partnership strategy enforced in the Ministry of Interior in all its sectors with the aim of enhancing public safety, the relevant security departments have made intensive efforts to ensure that students and the educational and administrative staff return to school safely. The directorate and the four governors developed a plan to ensure the flow of traffic and to ensure the safety of students. The General Directorate of Traffic has organized several training courses and lectures in all police directorates in the governance and provided educational lectures to qualify government and and private school guards, in addition to organizing training courses in various languages for bus drivers in order to familiarize them with the most important safety requirements during transportation. The General Directorate of Civil Defense conducted an awareness campaign in school which included the distribution of brochures on the most important safety requirements in schools. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdelti Fazayani, participated in the 158th session of the Arab League Council at the level of foreign ministers, which was held at the headquarters of the Arab League in Cairo. The minister noted that the Arab world is facing many challenges, which requires concerted efforts to address the growing dangers and all that may destabilize Arab security and violate the sovereignty of Arab countries. He said that Bahrain stresses the urgent need for Arab countries to unite and take all measures to combat extremism ideology and eliminate its sources of funding. The minister further added that Bahrain rejects external interference in the internal affairs of any country, stressing Bahrain's condemnation and rejection of foreign parties adopting a militias of militias, terrorist organizations and extremist groups present in the region. The minister also affirmed Bahrain's unequivocal position on the Palestinian cause and its support for the right of the brotherly Palestinian people to establish their independent state with East Jerusalem as its capital. Dr. Zayani expressed Bahrain's welcome to the announcement by the UN Special Envoy for Yemen to extend the armistic in or the armistice in Yemen for an additional two months. The minister stressed that water security is an integral part of Arab nation's security and expressing Bahrain's support for Egypt and Sudan in the issue of the Renaissance Dam. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of African Cooperation and Moroccan expatriates Nasser Burita on the side, sidelines of the 158th session of the Arab League Council at the ministerial level in Cairo. The meeting discussed the long-standing relations between the two brotherly countries and means to enhance bilateral cooperation in addition to the topics and issues on the agenda of the Council's meeting. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif and Rashid Zayani, participated in the first joint ministerial meeting of the strategic dialogue between the foreign ministers of the GCC and Central Asian countries. The GCC side was chaired by the Saudi Minister of Foreign Affairs and Chairman of the current session of the GCC Ministerial Council, His Highness Prince Faisal bin Farhan Al Saud, and from the Central Asian countries, the ministers of foreign affairs of Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, the Dep Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs of Uzbekistan, has participated in addition to participation 
communications of the GCC Secretary General, Dr. Naif al Hajraf. Dr. Zayani delivered a speech in which he expressed thanks to the efforts of the meeting to strengthen cooperation and develop relations between the two sides and affirmation of the depth of the historical relations between them. The meeting discussed the friendly relations between the GCC countries and Central Asian countries in ways of enhancing joint work in various fields as well as developing mutual interests for the benefit of their people. The meeting issued a joint statement in which the two sides welcomed the conveying of the first ministerial meeting of the strategic dialogue between the GCC and the countries of Central Asia, saying their commitment to establishing a strong and ambitious future partnership between their countries in various fields. The statement included exchanged views amongst the ministers and regional and international issues and stressed the importance of coordinating positions between the two sides through the strategic dialogue mechanisms established at this meeting. The statement indicated that ministers confirmed uh, what had been agreed upon regarding joint cooperation to enhance global economic recovery efforts addressing the complications arising from the COVID-19 pandemic, recover supply chain, food, energy, water security, developing green energy sources and technologies, confronting environmental challenges, climate change, education and exchanging best practices and expertise in all areas, creating business opportunities and supporting investment. The minister stressed the importance of the link between the principles, goals and priorities contained in the concept of interaction for the countries of Central Asia and the multilateral framework approved by the heads of Central Asian countries on July 21, 2022, as well as the decisions of the GCC on building cooperation with the countries of Central Asia. The statement referred to the adoption of the Joint Action Plan for Strategic Dialogue and Cooperation for the period 2023 to 2027, including political and security dialogue, economic and investment cooperation and strengthening communication between people. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs of Kazakhstan, Mukhtar Taylo-Burdi, on the sidelines of the first joint ministerial meeting of the strategic dialogue between the foreign ministers of the GCC and Central Asian countries. The two ministers reviewed the close friendship and cooperation between the two countries in various fields and ways of developing bilateral cooperation to serve mutual interests in addition to discussing a number of topics and issues of common concern. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs of Turkmenistan, Rashid Miradov, on the sidelines of the first joint ministerial meeting of the strategic dialogue between the foreign ministers of the GCC and Central Asian countries. The two ministers reviewed the close friendship and cooperation between the two countries in various fields and ways of developing bilateral cooperation to serve mutual interests. They also discussed regional and international developments and a number of issues of common concern. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Kyrgyzstan, Zinbik Kulobayev and Riyad, on the sidelines of the first joint ministerial meeting of the strategic dialogue between the foreign ministers of GCC and Central Asian countries. The two ministers reviewed the close friendship and cooperation between the two countries in various fields and ways to intensify the bilateral cooperation and further developing it to serve mutual interests. The two sides also discussed regional and international developments and a number of issues of common concern. The Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications, Mohamed El Kabi, revealed that so far 180 international, regional, and local companies have confirmed their participation in the Bahrain International Air Show 2022. El Kabi stressed that the keenness of these companies to participate is due to Bahrain's distinguished global reputation in the aviation industry and its distinguished strategic location. He pointed out that the remarkable turnout for participation is a result of the efforts made by the Supreme Council organizing committees and headed by the personal representative of His Majesty the King, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to attract such educational and training institutes in the development of human resources in the aviation sector. He added that the air show will contribute to raising awareness and the outputs of national and Gulf caters in the field of civil and commercial aviation. A recent economic report issued by the National Bank of Kuwait revealed that Bahraini government's continued implementation of the economic recovery plan will boost economic growth and raise the kingdom's credit rating more in this report. A major transformation witnessed by the Kingdom of Bahrain affirms the clear approach to develop the Bahraini economy by focusing on the main objective of improving the living standards of all citizens. 
The Economic Vision 2030 is based on the fundamental principles of sustainability, competitiveness and justice that shape the vision of the government, society and economy. An economic report issued by the National Bank of Kuwait revealed that the government of Bahrain continues to implement its economic recovery plan, which will boost economic growth and raise its credit rating. The kingdom is heading for economic growth this year that exceeds the pre-pandemic rate and recorded an economic recovery in the wake of the pandemic, Gulf financial support and high oil production, which in turn contributed to boosting the growth rate to 3% in 2022, surpassing the pre-pandemic GDP growth rate. The report noted that the announcement of the 30 billion US dollar recovery plan strengthened economic growth prospects in the medium term. The report expects the budget to register a surplus during the current year, exceeding the target of achieving balance by 2024. Bahrain continues to pursue high competitiveness in the global economy and increase productivity in a competitive climate that drives economic development and creates a broad base for prosperity.